all right everybody how you doing for today's video i got a very good one for you i have the full review on the zippo hand warmer i'm going to be going over everything i've learned about it in the last couple of months and the pros and cons and what i like and what i don't like and uh everything uh, everything i've done with this thing you're going to know in this video here and uh first we're going to start off with the basics this is the zippo hand warmer uh, if you got the older ones, you got a different pouch with a little bit of a better system there. The very nice pouch, but not as good as the older ones, I've noticed. Uh, and also on the older ones, they don't have this hole here. It's just the felt the whole way through. Uh, so it's nice having the hole. It makes it easy to fill. Uh, this is your little burner piece that you can buy more of from Zippo, which I recommend you do. Uh, the, they're apparently good for 70 lights. Uh, now, I didn't use it that many times, and it's still working, so it must be pretty close. Um, and this is just your cheapest chrome version of the hand warmers and uh, they work pretty good they will keep your hands warm <laughs> that is what they are for and uh, for anybody wondering you just fill up this and you know what you've seen a million videos like this I don't really feel like going over it too much but just so if, in case you haven't those are the basics you fill this up with fluid to the line that's the 12 hour line you know you dump it in this hole blah 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 then you take your soft flame Zippo, uh, you can use the yellow flame insert or regular Zippo insert and light that for 10 seconds and it lights up. It's pretty basic and that'll keep you, keep you warm all day. Now, the first thing is we'll talk about is, uh, what fluid did I run this on? What did I do all these tests on? I did it all on regular Zippo fluid. Uh, and for people who don't know and people that do know, obviously there is a Zippo hand warmer fluid. Uh, it, I guess it is different than Zippo fluid, but for me in Canada, it's a little bit harder to get. And I'm not paying an arm and a leg for it. I really didn't care that much. I find Zippo fluid is just good. So this is a full Zippo fluid only review. Uh, so for the next part of the fuel is... Uh, I can see this being used in many applications in the cold, obviously. You know, there's fishing and hunting and... Uh, working remotely or hiking or you know just uh, any situation you could find yourself outside and you're going to be out there for a long time this is a great way to warm yourself up uh, now a friend of on the channel we were in a live stream one time and he was talking about how uh, what he would do like for spring and fall and he'd go camping he'd have his nice sleeping bag uh, he would tuck this in a sleeping bag for the night that's what he would use this for when he'd go camping in a tent and uh, he'd have it in a sleeping bag keep him warm but he said he didn't like the smell and he got a electric one for nighttime and then he'll use that the fuel one outside during the day and I just want to say that for anybody who's going to use it the smell if you put it in a room and you have this running even with in the case and everything like that it's it's gonna smell it really is gonna smell a little bit and the room will smell the entire time this thing is burning. Uh, I can only imagine what it was like for him in the sleeping bag. Uh, even if you're sitting in a big living room and you're on the couch and this is in your pocket, uh, you could sit there and smell it. So uh, that's that's another thing about it. You might want to use it for strictly outdoor purposes and things like that. Uh, it is a fuel in there uh, for your for your safety and everyone else's. Uh, now. I had some other people, because we're talking about the fuel, so I'm going to go over everything about the fuel in this thing. And a few other people were saying, uh, you know, you could you could run other things in this too, like uh, how you could run other fluid in your Zippo. Uh, you can run other fluid in this too. Uh, there's lots of good videos out there on what other fluids you can use, and so go check them out. T-Man's got a good one. And... Uh, but uh, just like some other problems you might have, it might soot it up faster and things like that because it, maybe it's not as clean. So just beware. And uh, you can you can make this thing last as long as you want, basically, under the right circumstances. So here I'm going to be talking about, you're going to hear me, it's going to sound really good. Uh, but just remember that there's going to be another side to it and it might not be as good as an outcome as you think. So... Uh, you can make this thing run only six or eight hours. It's supposed to be a 12 hour, or you can make this thing run for like 19 hours. It really depends on how you do it. Uh, that was the longest run I got on. It was 19 hours, uh, it controlled, 
controlled environment, obviously. So this is how I got it to run for 19 hours, and I'll tell you how I got it to only run for six hours. Now, to get it to run for 19 hours, you fill it up with the whole 12 hour, 12 hour mark on your little Zippo jerry can here, and uh, you put it in the bag, right? You got to have it in the bag, and you got to have the big the bag closed but like obviously it won't close all the way right like you can you can get it to close tighter but uh the best thing is to have a little airflow because if you smother it you can actually put it out uh so i learned that the hard way <laughs> uh but that's a good way of saving it for later like say you're only going outside for a couple hours you can smother it let the whole thing die out cool down put it back in your pocket light it later when you need it again so that's kind of a pro and a con right however you want to do it uh, so to get it to run long, what I did was I just left it on its side, full, lit it, and I kept it in a regular house temperature room, you know, 70 degrees Fahrenheit for my American friends. Uh, well, I set it to about 68, but so in a room that was at least 68 degrees, it ran for 19 hours. I never moved it. I never touched it. All I would do is I'd just stick my fingers in there like that to see if it was hot or not. Uh, because this thing does get pretty hot. It gets hot to the point where sometimes it feels like you can't even touch it. It's so hot. Uh, but when it's in this, when it's in this pouch, it doesn't feel hot at all. You know what I mean? So like, now if you're living in, you know, temperatures or it only gets down to 20, 30 degrees Fahrenheit or whatever, 15 degrees Fahrenheit, you might not notice this as much. But for me, when it gets like minus 20 uh, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but minus 20 Celsius. It gets pretty damn cold, and your hands are cold. If your hands are freezing, you're not going to be able to warm your hands up through this pouch when it's that cold. You are not going to be able to, no matter how hot this is burning. Trust me, I've tried it. Uh, so, like, what I like to do all the time is when my hands are cold, I like to stick my hands in there because the metal's actually hot, and it's warming up my hands outside. But here's the problem with that. When you, so a lot of the times what I do is I just take it out like this and I'm just, I'm just holding it because it's so hot. But what I didn't realize and what a lot, not a lot of other videos on YouTube even mention is that when you do that in very cold temperatures, like minus 20 and things like that, Celsius, like I said, if you're American, see what that is in Fahrenheit, uh, it, it won't keep up. It'll put it out. Like it, it'll, it'll cool off the entire thing. The little cherry that's burning in here. If you cool off the entire metal, it could take half an hour in that temperature in your pocket for this to get hot again. All right. So a lot of the times in the cold, harsh winters, like it, it just, it doesn't seem feasible for me, you know, like I use it, but when you pull it out to get warm, it sucks all the, all the heat out of the metal and it just cools off the whole metal and then it takes forever to warm up again. Uh, sometimes it even puts it out by doing that. I was even getting it to go out. Uh, so that's something to look for too, right? And I had to relight it a couple times. Uh, so like I said, the best thing is to do if you find yourself in those temperatures is keep this in your pocket, keep it warm. Uh, you know, you got to have a little bit of breathing going on, uh, but just stick your hands in it on the metal and don't take it out of the case. That's going to be your best bet to keep this thing working, keeping your hands warm. Uh, and that's a big downside for me that having it out of the case cools it off. Like, drastically like you can't you can't get a couple of warmths out of it right like i bring the i go outside and i do the driveway and i'm, I'm playing with the puppy outside and uh, my hands are cooling this off i can't get three three warmths out of it right because i'm pulling it out i'm trying to warm my hands up and it's cooling off and that's it so now as far as fuel consumption it it takes a lot of fluid too like you you got to think you'll go through a bottle faster than you think uh look at that like it's basically the same width as the entire bottom of the bottle right so think about it like this one two three four five six seven but i bet you you could probably get about eight or nine you probably get eight or nine fills off one of these bottles. So, you know, th this bottle used to, now for some of my American friends, it still might only be two bucks, but for me, it used to be $4. Now it's $7 or something like that for one of these little bottles. And these used to be $12. Now they're like 16. 
I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, luckily, I have a lifetime supply. I don't have to worry about buying them. I have cans and cans of it uh, from everything I've ever ordered from Zippo.ca. You always get a free bottle, so I don't got to worry about it. Uh, but, you know, if you bring a bottle of $4 fluid, it might still be $2 for my American friends, like I said. You bring it out there, you're going to get eight or nine days out of it. So if you go camping for a week, you can use this every day for 12 hours for a week. Uh, believe me when I tell you that this does have its advantages, but it does have some cons too. And, uh, and the big con for me was that I had to figure that out on my own. I've watched so many videos where people have sworn up and down that they reviewed this hand warmer and that it's amazing and great and it just stays hot and it always works. Now I know that they never actually tested in any real cold weather because if, as soon as you bring this out in real cold weather, man, that thing cools right off. You can't take it out of the pouch. You got to keep it in your pocket. Uh, kind of a real pain in the butt for me, I, to be honest. Uh, I probably really honestly won't ever use this again. I don't have a need for it. Uh, you know, when hunting, it, it puts off such a smell, the animals could probably smell it. But, you know, that... Ha Trust me, I smell like a lot of things when I'm hunting, so and that hasn't stopped them. So it probably probably wouldn't hurt too bad to actually bring hunting. But even if I just I don't need it, I'm not going to. So I'll probably never use this again. But I was able to do a good review on it, I think, and uh, put some information out there that people might not be aware of of this thing before they buy it, and hopefully you enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.